for now. Um, so I'm your TechSoup Connect uh, Ontario chapter host uh, um, for TechSoup Canada and uh, uh, TechSoup is or well TechSoup Connect I guess is a global network for tech for good meetups so TechSoup, if you aren't aware of them, is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use tech effectively. And uh, they, we are a global network, so we have meetups all over the world. Uh, and this one here that I host is here in Ontario, Canada. Um, but we have, uh, I've had speakers from all over actually, and uh, Matt joined us from. Uh, you're in Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Um, so we're from all over the world. So some of the things that we value, we welcome everyone. Uh, we put our community first because we're all here to support each other. We build stronger nonprofits through technology, uh, and that's why I'd love, love to share as well. Um, and we love for people to participate so we can all learn from each other. So if you have something uh, to share or uh, teach us, um, especially technology related. Let me know if you're interested in um, uh, presenting anything. Uh, I'm always looking for speakers and presenters and we always treat each other with kindness and respect as well. So TechSoup Canada, at, uh, you can find them at techsoup.ca. Brings you a whole bunch of technology at prices you can afford and uh, uh, what's missing from this slide is also Google uh, workspace. Uh, in order to validate to get the free Google for nonprofits, you would have to go through TechSoup. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, discounts you can get through TechSoup as well. And as I mentioned, we would love your help. Uh, I'm always looking for people to uh, host events. So if you know somebody in the tech space who might have something great to share with nonprofits, please let me know. Um, and uh, if you have any other ideas uh, of what you'd like to see, please let me know. I, I do my best to try to find speakers on certain topics. And I know uh, Airtable was one that was highly requested uh, when we, we had a previous event, which is why I sourced out Matt uh, to <laughs> come out and help us. Um, a little bit about me, I am your host for the Ontario chapter. I have over 20 years of experience uh, implementing all sorts of systems for nonprofits as well as uh, small and large organizations and government organizations as well. I am Google Cloud certified um, and I do do Google Workspace implementations, um, but I also do a whole bunch of other system imp implementations, including Zoho One. Um, and Microsoft, although I don't focus as much on Microsoft, but I, I can help with uh, quite a few things there as well. And a whole bunch of other systems. Um, what I really love to do is help bring people, processes and technology together so that people can, people and businesses, uh, nonprofits, anybody uh, can work smarter, not harder. So sometimes it's something as simple as, you know, helping somebody figure out how to organize a template for something to uh, full out implementation or optimization or automation. Um, I obviously need to update this slide because we're no longer Toronto organizer, it's Ontario for TechSoup Connect. Um, and I am also the president for a nonprofit myself. I am the president of the One Parent Family Association of Canada. And I think that brings me to the end of my little deck and there we go. Um, and now I would like to pass it along to Matt, who is here to help us learn more about Airtable. So Matt, I'll hand it over to you to uh, do a little intro. Tell us a bit about yourself. And uh, I'm really excited for your presentation. Sure. Thanks, Andrew. I really appreciate the introduction and, uh, uh, and the invitation to come and, uh, and talk to you guys. Um, so, yeah, I'm Matt, Matt Bourne. Um, I'm currently based in Hong Kong, uh, clearly not from Hong Kong, um, but based here currently, um, originally from the UK, uh, and for the past few years I've been working with um, businesses and organisations to help them implement no-code or low-code tools, uh, Airtable being one of them, which we work with extensively, um, and how that then leads on to kind of better organization and automation ultimately of your uh, of your business needs. Um, so very happy to be here and and share um, my love of Airtable with with you guys. 
Um, so I can go ahead and share the screen, right, Sandra? Uh, you should be able to. Yep, I gave you. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> okay, so if you just let me know, you can see the slide deck. Okay. Yep, I can see it. Great. Looks good. Um, okay, so uh, I guess um, you know if anybody has questions, then you know please go ahead and put them in the chat for now. Um, hopefully, there'll be time at the end uh, to address any questions that you might have. Um, but hopefully, as we go through, uh, we'll answer some of your questions as you go. So um, uh, that's the plan, at least. Uh, OK, so uh, let's jump in. Um, first slide. OK, so today, uh, and apologies, I'm not looking at the camera. I have another screen here. Um, so today, I'm going to give you an introduction to Airtable brief overview of kind of what it is, what it does, um, uh, talk about why you might want to use it um, over and above a spreadsheet based solution, which is obviously very common. <clears throat> and then we'll go through a quick basic build as an example. Uh, I put together um, an event volunteer base uh, that might be of interest to uh, those of you in the, in the nonprofit and charity space. Um, to help you kind of organize those uh, those events and keep up to date with those um, many moving parts um, and then i'm going to touch on some slightly more advanced stuff just to kind of give you an understanding of the capabilities that airtable has uh, we only have a short time today to talk about uh, an overview uh, but just to kind of whet your appetite um, so i'm not sure of everybody's level or familiarity with their table so i'm going to keep it kind of at a, a fundamental level for now um, but you know, please connect in the future if you uh, if you'd like to learn more. All right. So Airtable is uh, a platform that's been around for I think probably six or seven years now, um, and we've been using it, or I've been using it, basically since it since it came out. It was uh, you know a real find at the time, and has been very very helpful in. Um, in previous jobs and of course in, the, in, in, in our agency now. Um, uh, and what Airtable is, is essentially um, an easy to learn tool to create a relational database. Um, and the benefit over that from something like a spreadsheet, which we'll kind of work through some examples, is that um, it gives you the opportunity to kind of organize your information and link it all together. So a relational databases, um, uh, being able to build relationships between pieces of information without having to kind of duplicate and duplicate. So why might you want to use Airtable? Well, um, I guess the best description, the most common one is that Airtable is a spreadsheet on steroids. So uh, what normally people mean by that is that it's something that's very easy to use. It has a familiar spreadsheet type layout so it's not an alien kind of platform to, to dive into. Um, it has that relational database functionality to it to be able to link information together very easily. Um, there's real-time collaboration as you would find with something like Google Sheets, um, but within the context of, of Airtable. So you can um, you know, tag other collaborators in your base and message them in context of what you're doing. There are also hugely powerful automation capabilities built in and native. Um, there are lots of integration opportunities uh, by connecting Airtable to other apps that you may use. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, there are visualization capabilities, um, you know, so charts and summaries and all of those sorts of things to help create dashboards. Um, and they have uh, a growing number of very powerful native apps. Um, within the Airtable uh, ecosystem itself. So we'll touch on that as well a little bit later, but just to kind of give you some reasons why you might choose Airtable over and above um, a traditional spreadsheet solution. Uh, and one that I like to, to share is that you want to replicate your data, not duplicate it. Um, uh, so those of you that have uh, many spreadsheets that are probably very similar you have a different view for a client, a different view for management, different view for yourself, um, you know, and you're kind of having to 
duplicate information all over the place and it's hard to keep it all up to date. So uh, Airtable will, will help you manage that process uh, by replication, not by duplication. Very important point, but we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more. So now we're going to jump into it. Um, I'll, I'll walk you through a few initial things about Airtable first, and then we'll dive into um, the base itself. Uh, and we'll cover in that, giving you some pointers about how to prepare your data if you did want to transfer your information over to Airtable. Uh, the transfer itself, um, how you might go about formatting that data, and then linking it all together to really take advantage of the power. And then we'll go through a fully built out example of a, um, uh, an event volunteer base uh, with some little Easter eggs in there of some slightly more advanced functions that uh, just might be of interest for you. And I'll give you a very brief introduction to the automations features and uh, the app functionality within Airtable as well. Um, so there's quite a lot to cover. Uh, I'll jump right in um, and let's give it a try. So I'm switching a table now. Hopefully you'll be able to see a Google Sheet. Let me know if for some reason you can't. So what I put together here is, a, is an example of, I guess, something that may look very familiar to, to you. Uh, we have a simple Google Sheet um, with five different types uh, of events that we're managing, but I would imagine there would be many, many more events to keep track of. Um, and there's commonality between all of them. Um, but the beauty of a spreadsheet is that you can structure the information however you would like. You can have it in a row, you can just use a single cell, um, very, very flexible. Um, so in this case, you know, we've got the, the important data points here, uh, organizer, date, location, volunteers that have signed up, okay? But if we hop into another example, obviously the event information is, is different, uh, but some of the volunteers are the same. So how do we keep track of that without having to, you know, constantly duplicate information? Um, so we're going to, I'm going to show you kind of an example of how you might prepare data that will be in a similar structure to this. So let's look at our organizers first. Everything's on one line, which is a great start. Um, and Airtable has a structure which works in, uh, it looks at its information in records. So a row in a spreadsheet is referred to as a record. So everything in this whole row would be referred to as a record. Uh, we can keep going and going for as long as you want to. Uh, a column is referred to as a field. Um, so all of the information in the column or the field must be the same type within the entire column. So we can't have one cell as one type, one cell as another type like we can within Excel at the moment. So a slightly different uh, factor there. Um, so uh, the other thing is that the first column is always what's referred to as the primary field. So we want to make this sort of as descriptive as possible to help us. So here we have a full name, first name, last name, email, phone number, and we've got them all nice and neatly in records with a nice uh, descriptive title at the top. So far, so good. Um, then in events, uh, if I just hop back here. So our event tab previously was a little unstructured, you know, nice and easy to use, not a problem in a spreadsheet. Um, but we need to do a little bit of work to prepare that if we were going to transfer. So again, our primary field, uh, giving it the title of our of our event, obviously the date, location, address, etc. And then we have an organizer field here, and we're going to use that organizer field to automatically link that information back to our organizer table. So at the moment, um, we've got the organizers here, and Maggie has has two. Um, two events, um, and this will link back to this information. So I'll show you how we do that shortly. And then for volunteers, we have our full list of all of our volunteers, obviously the usual uh, data points. Um, and then under our events section, this is what we're going to use to link all of our information to our events um, to be able to identify these really quickly and easily. So where people are going to multiple events, um, we can just separate that with a comma um, and, that, and that will tell Airtable when the time is right uh, how we want to separate that data out. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So 
depending on how big your uh, spreadsheet is, it can take a little while to format your data. Um, but uh, this structure is going to really help us make it a quick and easy transfer. All right, so let's set something up. So first of all, we're going to download a CSV file, which just gives us all of our information in a really easy to use and processable way. And we're going to do that for each of our tables here. And then finally, our events. Okay, we've got everything we need. Now we're going to hop over to what would be our Airtable um, account. Uh, as you can see, I have many in here, um, but we're going to add a new base. And we could start with a template. There are many templates available just to get you started. Today, we're going to start from scratch. And that will create us a base. Um, we'll give it a name. Um, event. We can choose the color. Let's have a nice. Uh, today's a pink day. Oh, pink. And then we could choose a little logo if we wanted to. Um, like so. And Airtable will automatically create us a table and some default fields, but we don't need that at the moment. Um, uh, so we are going to add a new table. And we're going to import from CSV. There are various options for us to import, by the way. Um, we can just connect our account together and then we can import information directly from Excel or from Apple or you know, uh, Trello if you've used that before. So there are some, some nice options there. But today we're just going to use a CSV, which is nice. Um, and we're going to find. The information. Um, um, okay, and we'll import events first. Okay, simple as that. It will have a go at guessing what the field types are. We're just going to turn that off because we can change that in a minute. Okay, and all of our event information is brought in. We can remove this, we don't need it. Let's rename it so we know what we're doing. And then we can add a new. Can you uh, zoom in, please? It's a little hard to read. Sorry, apologies. Thank you. Sure. Uh, how's that? Um, so, I was speaking so, on, some, on behalf of someone that put a message in the chat, so maybe they should. Yeah, thanks. That works. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to uh, hard to see the, the chat when I'm sharing the screen. Thank you. Um, Sorry, that's my bad. I, I wasn't keeping an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's create another one. Again, we'll add we'll add our information. This time we'll have organizers. I'm going to switch that off. I'll show you how to change it in a minute. And those are our uh, organizers. And then our last table here. This is our volunteers. And then off, import that. Okay, we're all set. Everything's in. Um, so you can see if you prepare your data really uh, thoroughly, then it's a very, very easy process. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of things uh, and then we can move on to our built out version. So in here, um, let's go over to events. Uh, you can see that it's all very nicely structured here already. Um, and we can add a new record. I'll show you that shortly. Um, we can change the field type. So let's say we want a single line text here. We could change the date to, um, to an actual date field. Um, 
if we go to volunteers, because let me know that there's an email address. We can change this to email. And it changes the field type. And there are many, many different types of um, fields that uh, will give you specific controls, which you can't do obviously within, within a spreadsheet. Um, so let's link these up. So I think let's first of all, uh, link our organizers and our events. So we're going to do this by um, changing the field type um, to a linked field. And we want to link our events to um, our organizers. Uh, allow, uh, could one event have multiple organizers? I guess it could, uh, but for now we'll leave it. Okay, and you see that that format has changed straight away. So if we hop over to our organizers now, it's now linked to their event. So Maggie has two events linked to her. So if we click on one, you can see that it's connecting us immediately to events, even though we're inside the organizers reference and you could have access to all of the information in here. All right, so simple as that. And we'll do the same with volunteers. So we're going to use our event um, field. I'm going to change it to link. And we want to link it to events. Please give them the name. And it's all done. And to prove it, let's go to events. And there are all of our volunteers brought in. So one of the cool things we can do now. Um, uh, is we can use one of our special field types and we're going to count up how many volunteers we've got. Bam. So if somebody is added or removed, this number will update automatically. So keep really easy eye on how many volunteers we've got for each location. Um, which volunteers are going to which, you know, some are going to one, some are going to many, but it's all linked back to their individual record. And of course, our organizers can do the same. Um, so now if we want to add a new, um, a new event, it's really easy to do. Uh, I now have to think of a city in Ontario. Um, oops. Uh, let's have another check. Okay, and then we put in our date and our location and so on and so on and so on. We can link it to our organizer. Let's say Heather is going to do it this time. We linked Heather to it. Let's check that. Go to our organizers. And Heather is now linked to the Ottawa Soup Kitchen as well. Okay, and that's as simple as it is, and it's all connected up now. Maybe we had some volunteers already, or we wanted to add a new one. We can do anything like that from here. So maybe, um, there's my favorite name in here. These are all randomly <laughs> created names, by the way, but my favorite, I think, probably is D.D. Dunkelberger, which is objectively hilarious. Um, so let's have her in there for now to get us started. But you can see how quick and easy that was now. Uh, very, very simple to do. Um, and now we have all of that information in one place, all transferred. And now we can do more or less whatever we want with it. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, so now I'm going to hop over to a, a base that I prepared earlier. Uh, and I've added in a few extra parts here. Um, so we have uh, I've created a, a formula field here to help us, you know, bring in more relevant information. Um, uh, I have added, uh, let's go to volunteers. So I've added some lookup information here, which you can do because the records are now linked. So if we want to look up a piece of information in another location um, in the events tab, we can just look it up. So we're bringing in the date of the event as a raw piece of information, the address, which didn't exist in this table until we linked it. 
Um, so you can start to see the power as it goes through. Uh, and I'm going to show you just a couple of other things that are possible now. So in our events tab, we've got all of our raw data and we can visualize that in various ways. So there is a calendar function, which now we can see in a really easy to understand way when all of these items, uh, sorry, all of these events are going to happen. And if we were to drag this, we can move it around, you know, there's something happens, a date changes, gets put off, postponed, cancelled, whatever. You know, we can handle it uh, and it will be reflected in the data. And because that data is linked to other items, it was reflected there immediately as well. Okay, so it becomes a super powerful tool with, when you don't need to, um, uh, you don't need to replicate your information as you go around, you can, sorry, you don't need to duplicate, you can, you can replicate. Um, Matt, does an event calendar get created automatically for as long as you have dates in your um, columns? Uh, not automatically, but down here we have different uh, event types. So okay. this is an event for, for all things, sorry, this is a calendar for all things, but we can then uh, create another one and we could just filter. So say we only wanted to see, <clears throat> excuse me, um is it location or is it address uh and it's too plain so for this one we only want to see things in toronto so this is a calendar for toronto now because it's only going to show us toronto all right um so some various different types of views i'm going to show you a few more uh organizers Nothing special going on there. But for volunteers, um, we have a few different types of views. Um, we have a card view, which just visualizes the information in a slightly easier to understand way. Um, you know, you can take a snapshot of each card of each volunteer or whatever data point you're using. Um, no problem. Uh, so just a different way of visualizing. Um, we have what's called a Kanban style. So maybe um, people need to confirm. Uh, and at the moment, um, Argentina, we can move her into a waiting response. And if we go to her data, she's now been tagged as a waiting response. Um, but let's say we're in this view now and actually she can't make it anymore. Um, and so we go back to our Kanban view, and now she's been moved into the correct pile. And if we move her back into uncategorized, there. So everything updates regardless of where you make the change. Okay, that's the power of the system there. Because you have all the information, you're just visualizing it, manipulating it in a different way. Um, so there's another tab here which I've created called donations, which I'll save as a little surprise for you. Um, so we also have a form capability. So these are all of our fields that we have within the volunteers table, but we can use them to create a form to make things easier for us. Um, and we can use this form uh, if we go to open form. Airtable is going to create a URL for us that we can share anywhere, public URL. Uh, so this is dedicated for this form. You can share it as part of your marketing activity. You know, you could give it to, you know, to make a QR code and people could scan it and still get to the same uh, website, uh, the same uh, form. You know, whatever it is that you would do to kind of um, drum up interest in volunteering at one of your events. So let's do it. Um, I need to think of a famous person from Ontario, uh, one of the Ryans, uh, I think Ryan Gosling was born in London, um, but this, this is my email address, not his, sadly, I don't have his email address, he wouldn't give it to me. Um, uh, so we're going to go through here and we can choose here which event we want to go to. So you can see that the Ottawa one has also been added. 
Um, and well, he's from London. Maybe he wants to clean up London. Um, and we submit that. Okay, and this gives us a nice little message. This branding can all be removed, by the way. Um, uh, and, and now if we go to our volunteer data, we can see that Ryan has been added at the bottom here for the London cleanup. And he's all linked in to, to that particular, uh, that particular uh, event. And he's all set. So keep an eye on this field down here, because what I've done also with this is I've set an automation to create um, a confirmation page and email it um, to Ryan uh, so that he knows and he has all the information and everything's nice and, uh, nice and squared up. So it takes a couple of minutes for that to trigger. And whilst we're waiting for that, I'm just gonna hop back in to tell you a bit more about Airtable itself. So as far as pricing goes, um, they have already very competitive pricing, but they do also have uh, a non-profit pricing structure, uh, which I think um, is definitely worth uh, applying for. Um, uh, all of these features, you know, the pro plan is, has just got so many more additional features um, uh, with the apps that you can use, the amount of records that you can have in the base, um, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very uh, powerful solution. Um, and you can check this out, you know, I'll share this link uh, with the, um, I'll share my presentation and there's a few links in there that you can go and, and check things out. Um, so it's pretty competitive as it is now, um, but it will be even better, I think, through the nonprofit uh, that they offer with 50% off the monthly cost, which is a fairly generous discount. Um, so, you know, share all of these links with you and you can, you can check that out when you're ready. So let's go back and see how we're doing here. Okay, nothing's popped in yet, um, but we'll keep an eye on that. Um, let me just check to see if there's... There, there are a couple questions. questions if you want those while you wait. Yeah, let's have a quick... Through. Let's have a couple of quick questions. There's, um, so Fash was asking about um, importing data from other places. So uh, it sounds like they need to have people input data every week into an online form. Will Airtable automatically update it? Um, will, will Airtable update the, so I, I'm not sure if it, so I'm not sure where your source data is coming from, Fash, but I believe, um, and I think you were showing me this, uh, Matt, that if you connected to say a Google spreadsheet, if you update the Google spreadsheet, for example, would it automatically update Airtable with that information? Um, uh, yes, there is a sync function as part of as part of Airtable solution. So. I probably need a few more details to give you a comprehensive answer, but, yeah. but theoretically, yes. Or if not, um, you know, you could certainly do something like that with Zapier, uh, which I'll touch on very briefly in a moment. So, but I think I think the answer to that is is going to be yes. Yeah, I, I think Matt pretty much can find a way to do anything with automation and integration. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. But, um, One other but, question is, can yeah, ahead, Notion go. do what Airtable does? Um, Notion is a great platform. Uh, there, I mean, a lot of its capability is relational database capability. Um, they've only recently brought out access to their API, which means up until this point, uh, automating anything within Notion has been very difficult. Um, I'm not a huge Notion user at the moment. Uh, I'm more of an Airtable guy, but um, certainly I can see some good use cases for, for Notion. I think uh, it's not as well connected um, and some of the integrations are still being developed. So they're probably a little bit more heavy lifting, um, but there may be certain advantages over Airtable for, for your individual use case. So, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be down on Notion, um, but I would say also check out Coda, Coda.io. Maybe you can put that in the chat um, sure. as a Notion alternative. 
which is, in my view, much more powerful. Um, so if you're thinking about Notion, also check out coda.io. All right, let me jump back in here then. So uh, if we look at the attachments field here, Ryan has got his attachment. And I'm going to pull in my email here. Hopefully you can see uh, an outlook now. And it sent us an email. And this has all been powered through Zapier. OK, so uh, I'll explain how that happened shortly. But it'll send any anybody who signs up. Um, Hi, Ryan. Thanks for signing up to volunteer. We can't wait to meet you for the London cleanup. This is the address, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and if we go into the attachment, uh, and we've automatically created this document using a system called Document, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, and I am a terrible designer, so it, you can make it look <laughs> as beautiful as you want to. Um, but then it's brought in all of our variable fields. So thanks for making a difference, Ryan. This is the what you're helping us with. This is the date. This is the address. Um, and I've also added in here a little Easter egg for you, um, which is uh, a donation link. Um, so I'm going to just click on this one and show you very quickly. So this is using a platform called Stripe, which some of you may be familiar with as a payment processor. Um, and one of the features is that we can create a link uh, for specific amounts. They are working on variable amounts as well. So you, they could choose how much to donate and you're not kind of forcing them down a the road. Um, uh, and it just makes it very easy for you to include a link in any of your communications to, to help with your donations as well. So I'm just going to fill this out really quickly and I'm going to show you how powerful this is. So if you remember this bit that I'm doing, okay, because you guys are going to have a go in a minute. So 4242, just keep doing 42 until you can't fill it in. That's a, like a fake credit card number. Um, put in any date in the future, and you can just put one, two, three, and I'll have that, and I'm going to pay that. Okay, so our payment has been processed, and if we go into donations, there we go, the, that literally just came in. It, it, it came in faster than I could actually get to the tap. Um, and this is being done by some automation, which I'll show you in a in a moment. Um, uh, just you know, to show you, I guess, some more advanced features. Uh, now you've got all of your information in here. How you can link things together. You know, we could then link this to our volunteer, or you know, create a new account for them, or whatever, <clears throat> whatever was needed. Um, so just some extra little pieces there to um, to whet your appetite. Um, so. Uh, who wants to have a go? Um, can I open the chat from here? Let me get back to chat. Right. Why is this so difficult? Hmm. I'm just going to stop share for one moment. Copy this into the chat. Okay, and uh, if you if you want to give it a try, that's great. I will hide the email address part, so you don't have to worry about anybody seeing the email address. I will hide that. So feel free to give it a try, and we can watch these roll in as they happen. So that's quite nice, and I can uh, tell you a few other features in the meantime while we're waiting for those. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, when you get to the credit card one, just 4242 and keep typing that in and then any date in the future for the expiry and just any number for the CDC. Um, please use a, re a real email address for the, for the form uh, because otherwise you won't get your uh, email notification. Uh, but all the rest of the information can be fake, of course. There we go. Absolutely, one from one from Jane already. That's great. 
for agency that came in just instantly there uh, and in a couple of minutes Jane Jane I assume Jane isn't actually your name um, you'll get your notification but we'll we'll I'll, I'll dip into automations really quickly and we'll hop back to those in a moment uh, so let me share my screen again okay we're back hopefully you can still see the air table here so there's Jane's record has just come in at the bottom there. Well, and that triggered really fast. Uh, so you should get yours in a moment. Um, so I'm going to hop into automations and apps, and then we should have time for some more questions. Um, so for automations, um, this is the automation that I set up that received the information about the credit card. So there are lots of triggers. Um, there are all sorts of different types of triggers here. Uh, when a record is created, updated, you can run it on a weekly, daily schedule. Uh, we're using something called a webhook here, which is a quite an advanced function um, for those of you more advanced users or wanting to be more advanced users. Um, but there are plenty of also triggers that you can take from integrations with other platforms. So maybe from your Outlook or from your calendar. Uh, as your trigger event. And then we would have a series of actions. In this case, we're just gonna create a new record here, um, but there are lots of actions that we could take. Um, so if we created a custom event, we we'll choose any trigger. Uh, and in our action step, we can use this to send an email through Gmail, send a message through Slack, update a Google Sheet, um, uh, even send a tweet if you wanted to. So. Um, this is a hugely powerful automation platform that is native within um, Airtable uh, and uh, is part of any plan, actually, uh, depending on how many runs you want to use. So uh, just a, um, a way of automating some of your work um, that has been a game changer and a relatively new feature within, within Airtable. Um, this wasn't possible to do natively um, six months ago, uh, maybe seven, actually. Um, and then there are some other integration platforms called Zapier, which I'll touch on before we finish. Um, but that's kind of a, uh, a very brief introdu introduction to the automation capability. Then we have something called apps. Um, and we can add an app here. I see Fash has also submitted. Um, so this is like the Google App Store or the, uh, the Apple App Store, but for anything within Airtable. Very specialized items here, document. This is the program, the app that I use to create the document. It's actually uh, something that we developed um, and we're pretty proud of it. Uh, we have a native app in Airtable as well as a Zapier integration. So if you wanted to know more about that in the future, please feel free. We also have a nonprofit uh, uh, payment um, uh, payment discount as well so happy to talk to you about that so there's a load in here that might meet some specific needs that you have this is one that i really love um, it's just a summary but it can help us create um, a dashboard so this is going to take uh, give us a summary number just going to count our number um, so let's you would so, say you wanted to keep a track on how many volunteers you have. Okay, and then, when, and then when if somebody adds another one, you'll see that number change live. Uh, but let's add one more. And we also want to keep track of uh, donations okay so we want to get a running total uh, of donations uh, that's going to be um and matt with the running totals for the dashboard is there a way to have both number of donations and the amount given side by side yes yeah we could just dollars yeah we could just create another another window and have it have it together and organize it that way. 
Um, this is just a, you know, an example of what you could do. So at the moment we've got volunteers and donations, but we could have number of donations, uh, number of donations, value of donations, donations today for the month. You know, we can do a, a, we can do a load of things um, with it. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'll just click in a couple more things uh, and then I think we'll be ready for any more questions that you might have. So um, uh, this is Stripe. Uh, this is the payment processor that I was talking to you about. Um, they also have, uh, I think, a nonprofit discount going. Um, great one to check out. Um, this is what I use to create the document. This is a template within Document. Again, this is our platform that we developed. Um, other document processors are available, by the way. Um, but we're pretty proud of what this one can do. Um, so these are all variables here, and we just link those up together to create a new document every time a, a record is run. Um, but you know, we can make this as pretty as we need to be. As I said, uh, design is not my forte. Um, and then finally, we have Zapier. Um, and Zapier is an automation platform, which is probably familiar to a lot of you, but if it's not, it allows you to create triggers and actions. So you would use this where an automation was not available within Airtable natively. So if you wanted to connect to a platform that didn't have an integration with, with Airtable, you could do it through something like Zapier. So in this case, uh, when a new volunteer submits the form, it triggers a new record in Airtable. We create a document in document as per the template I just showed you. Um, we update the record with the uh, attachment itself, and then we send all that off in an email to uh, whoever's sent us the, the form. And I think that brings me uh, sort of to a conclusion. Let's just see if there's one more. Ah, okay, so I've basically covered all of this now. But um, you know, Airtable is a highly connected platform. Um, the benefit of it is you can keep it as your single source of truth. Um, so you can import all of your information into Airtable and make it all visible in one place, um, whether that's, you know, operations, apps, marketing, finance, whatever it might be, um, there are connections available to help you, help you build what you need. And that can be done through Zapier uh, or through, you know, more complex APIs, but all of those options are available to you. Uh, within the Airtable platform. And I think that's me. Excellent. Um, there is a question here about integration, and I'm not sure if you're aware because um, it's a Canadian uh, thing, but um, if you know if there's an integration with CanadaHelps.org, which would then issue the charitable receipts and or an integration or app that would send out the tax receipts in accordance with all of CRA's complex requirements. Um, I, I would, yeah, I would expect there's like, unless Canada helps has an API, it probably wouldn't be able to integrate with it. But I think what you probably could do is set up some sort of, uh, automation in order to send out receipts from wherever you're sending them from. So if they're coming from, if you've set them up somewhere already, it can probably trigger it and send it, or you can create your own probably using document. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely could. If you, I mean, um, yeah, if there's no API, that's gonna be hard. Uh, if there is an API, it's definitely workable, uh, any kind of API. Um, uh, but if you, if there's like, um, a certain structure or protocol in place that, and, the, and the receipt must meet certain criteria and have certain data points, then you could definitely just create a template within document or within, you know, within Google Docs or something. Um, and we can uh, then populate that information into that format and then issue that receipt, you know, whether it's for a donation or any other, any other reason. Excellent. I'm trying to see. I don't think I missed any questions. If I did miss any questions, feel free to pop them again in the chat or come off mute and you can ask Matt yourself. Yeah. Anna, um, I was just wondering if the demo form that you use for the signing up for the volunteering, is that going to be live beyond this training, just in case we wanted to show our team just like 
the kind of tools available and what's capable in your table? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah. link I'll I'll leave open, no problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a, uh, Michael just made a great suggestion. If you wanted more powerful reporting, you can uh, link it with Power BI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a whole load of other options available to to export the information into something like Power BI or mm -hmm. um, you know Google Data Studio or those sorts of things. You know, if you have the technical nous to do all that, it's all open there for the taking. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I guess last call for any questions. All right, I guess that's looking like it. Matt, thank you so much. That was really uh, insightful and exciting and interesting. And um, I think we all got a lot of great uh, information out of it. Look, uh, look I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much for, um, for inviting me on and, and, and be happy to take any questions. If you wanted to contact me uh, about anything in particular, then um, I think Sandra, you've got a copy of the um presentation to you know share with whoever wants it uh, if they I, yes want to I get do. In touch. so feel free to reach out um matt i'm trying to remember what your email was again i was going to type it in the chat for people uh, uh, it's it's matt at 5x5.co uh, five was spelled out right or is it the number five uh the the the, the spelled version 5x uh, dot co right yeah dot co yeah okay so there's my email address there's matt's email address uh if you want to reach out for anything you know how to reach us otherwise i'll let you guys uh have a great wednesday okay thanks so much everybody thanks have a so much day. matt have a great day Thank you. Bye. bye 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 now